So here we have the Somso oversized human heart. First, we'll look at the external anatomy. So the apex of the heart is the pointy end down here. The base of the heart is is really where the, the great vessels come in across here. It's, it's a bit difficult to label it, but the, this region here where the, the big vessels are coming in, that would be considered the base of the heart. So the apex, the pointy end, the base up here. These little structures are called auricles. They kind of look like ears. They are there to increase the, the volume of the atria. And if we look at it, you can see it's it's kind of hollow inside there. So we have our great vessels coming off the top, the pulmonary trunk there with a lowercase f on it, coming off the right ventricle, which would in here. The pulmonary trunk branches into pulmonary arteries. At the moment, you're thinking, you're wrong, those are veins. No, arteries carry blood away from the heart. Our right ventricle pumps blood out the pulmonary trunk through pulmonary arteries to the lungs. That blood then drains back pulmonary veins, which you see there with a lowercase g on them, there and there. There are pulmonary veins, which come back into the left atrium. So while typically arteries are color-coded red and veins are color-coded blue, when we talk about the pulmonary vessels, either our pulmonary arteries or pulmonary veins, those colors are reversed because pulmonary arteries carry low oxygen blood to the lungs and pulmonary veins carry high oxygen blood back to the heart. The big red vessel here makes this curve there is the aorta. It has a number seven on it. Now the aorta is broken into different regions. We have the ascending aorta coming up from the left ventricle, the aortic arch making the arch, and then the descending or thoracic aorta which would continue down the thoracic cavity there. There are three branches off the aorta in the human heart. Now we're looking at the heart from the anterior side. So we're looking at it as it would sit in a person, which means that this side is the right side of the heart, this side is the left side of the heart. So from right to left, those branches are brachiocephalic artery, left common carotid artery, left subclavian artery. Brachiocephalic, the word brachiocephalic means that it goes to the arm and to the head. And shortly after this branch on the right, it will branch off to a right subclavian and a right common carotid. Left common carotid will go straight toward the head, and left subclavian will arch off over toward the clavicle. The big blue vessel here with a lowercase c on it, this would be your superior vena cava. And the superior vena cava will branch off into two brachiocephalic veins. So superior vena cava. The inferior vena cava down here. A lowercase d on that. Both the superior and the inferior vena cava there and there will enter through the right atrium here. Now let's look at our coronary blood vessels. Remember that the coronary blood vessels feed the heart itself. Now you have a, well, let's open this up. So here's your aorta. Again, this is the right side of the heart over here. So this branch coming off the aorta to the right is your right coronary artery. It has a number four on it. You'll see there are other branches coming off here to the side. Anatomically, hearts differ. The pattern of coronary arteries is not always the same on everyone's heart. 
there are lots of anastomoses, or alternate routes that blood vessels may take. Not everyone's heart will have all of the possible coronary arteries. Labeled on this heart are the most common, although most of the options are modeled, uh, typically only the, the common ones have an actual label on it. But we can see that right coronary artery here. Now the left coronary artery is there. The left coronary artery is up. It runs under that pulmonary trunk. And we can't see that. It runs under that auricle and it comes out here. So here's our left coronary artery under there. And then it branches. Now as it branches over here, this would be the left circumflex artery. Again, the red one artery. And it branches here and it comes out to the front. This is the anterior, because it's in the front, interventricular coronary artery. Or just the anterior interventricular artery. Anterior means it's in the front. Interventricular means it runs between the two ventricles. In this groove right here, which is called the interventricular sulcus. Left coronary artery as we see it here, circumflex, and on the posterior side of the heart, we have these two branches here. This would be the posterior interventricular coronary artery. And then we come back all the way over here to the right, where we see the right coronary artery here. Now there is this large branch coming off the right side that runs down toward the apex of the heart. This would be the right marginal artery. So these are the coronary arteries. Veins, the big blue vein in the front that runs right beside the anterior interventricular artery is the great Coron excuse me, the great cardiac vein. So great cardiac vein here. In the back, running beside that posterior interventricular artery is the middle cardiac vein. And then this big blue vein right there with a number six on it, it's called the coronary sinus. on the posterior side of the heart. One more feature that we can see on this very large heart from Psalm Soma is this white band of tissue right there. That white band of tissue is the ligamentum arteriosum. In the fetus, that would have been the ductus arteriosus, the opening between the aorta and the pulmonary trunk. So that high oxygen blood coming into this right ventricle would be pumped out and then out to the aorta and to the body. Now that we're looking at an adult heart, this is scar tissue and it is the ligamentum arteriosum. Let's open this up. So when we open this little door right here, we're looking into the right atrium. Remember there are four chambers of the heart, two upper chambers, two lower chambers. So now we're in the right atrium. The muscles, these bands of muscle inside the atria are called pectinate muscle. So we see these rough bands, pectinate muscle. If we look into the right atrium, we see this dark spot right here. That is the opening to that coronary sinus back there. So that deoxygenated blood from the heart itself drains here back in the general circulation. This oval shaped structure right there is the fossa ovalis. In the fetus, this would have been the foramen ovale, a hole that goes all the way through. So that oval shaped structure, again, fossa ovalis. Let's pull the hold the front side of the heart off. And I believe this one's got a door on the back as well. So when we look in the back, we're looking into the left atrium. 
And again, you can see your fossa ovalis there. Remember, in the fetus, this would have been an opening between the right and left atrium so that that high oxygen blood can move from one side of the heart to the other. In dissection, you can feel that. You can reach inside that, that the two atria and put your fingers on either side like that, and you can feel the soft place that is the, the fossa ovalis. So here are two lower chambers. The ventricles are right ventricle or left ventricle. Inside the ventricle, we see these rough bands of muscle, and you can see it down here in this piece that I've taken off, these really big, fat, rough bands of muscles. These are called trabeculae carnae. Trabeculae, that mesh that we see, and carnae is, of course, meat. Some of those trabeculae carnae poke out here into the ventricles themselves. Those are called papillary muscles. Finger-like, little projections of muscle. And they connect to these little strings right here. Those little strings are chordae tendinae and they anchor the valves. The two atrioventricular valves have these structural supports, the chordae tendinae and these papillary muscles. On the right side, the valve between the right atrium and the right ventricle is the tricuspid valve. It's the right side, tricuspid valve. On the left side, this valve between the left atrium and the left ventricle that would be your bicuspid valve. The valve that goes between the right ventricle and the pulmonary trunk, that is your pulmonic semilunar valve or pulmonary semilunar valve, depending on the text that you're using. Here, the aortic semilunar valve between the left ventricle and the aorta. Both of those you can see have a lowercase k on them. So those are your two semilunar valves. This structure here with a capital B on it is the ventricular, interventricular septum, the wall between the two ventricles. We looked at congenital heart defects. We looked at ventricular septal defects. But that ventricular septum has a hole in it. All right. So normally in class, we would be using more than, than just this model. Um, but of course, now this is what we've got. So there are quality. There are your structures for your giant Samso heart.